Alright guys, Steve here. In this video, I want to show you how to create a blast shield and get 100% efficiency when taming a golem, as it will stop a cannonball's splash damage. This is a follow-on from a previous video, the best way to tame a rock elemental, so you need to watch that first, as it will teach you all the important mechanics you need to know. I've linked it in the description box below, and it's at the end of this video. To build a blast shield, you need five foundations, seven metal triangular roofs, four metal triangle foundations, seven metal double doorways, and a cannon. Add those to your hotbar and we'll start building. Remember this is not a trap, but a blast shield. So you'll need some skill in positioning the rock elemental correctly. As with this taming technique, the golem will just stand there and do nothing. It won't attack your structure, bend down to throw rocks at you, or move in any way so you can just keep shooting it in the head. Place three foundations down in the direction of a rock elemental. Then place a triangular foundation at the end, where the blast shield will be. Then go to the end where the golem will walk in. Place two more foundations at the sides. And at the end of those, put two more triangle foundations down. You'll end up creating a T with pointy ends. Now you can pick up the thatch foundations as you won't be needing those. And place two double doorways in the inside of a triangle. These will be the railings to stop the golem walking around a blast shield. And repeat that on the other side. That's where the rock elemental will walk in. And in the middle where your blast shield will be, build three double doorways up. Then we're going to place one triangular roof facing inwards, towards the direction the rock elemental is going to come from. You can press Q on the keyboard to switch a tiles position. With a triangular roof pointing towards a golem. Next get on a flyer because we're building high up. Place a triangular roof each side of a centre one. The point of those will need to be pointing down. Move around on the flyer or press Q if a tile doesn't snap properly. Place two more triangular roof tiles at the sides pointing up. And to finish off at the sides, have a triangle roof tiles pointing down at an angle. So the front bit should be nice and straight, and the side corners should be angled. And that's your blast shield done. All you do now is place your cannon foundation. That can be another triangle. Get it in the centre right in front of your blast shield, but not too close. Put your cannon down on top of it, then aim it to where the golem's head will be. And you're done. That's a blast shield complete. Just give you a quick tour around it. Press pause if you need to. Right, let's go and get a golem and kite it towards the blast shield. Fly near it to get its aggro. And then fly over its head and shoulders to make sure your pterodon's at the right height and it cannot hit your flyer. Fly and kite the golem right in the centre of your blast shield. Then you need to place a flyer and jump off right at the point of a foundation. That's the skillful part. If a golem's too close to you when you jump off, it will target you and try and throw a rock at you. So try jumping off when it's further away. Move away and it will target the flyer. When it walks forward and snugly fits its head in the blast shield. Next go to your cannon, shoot it in the head, and you'll notice that there's only one set of damage numbers. If a golem's getting hit by splash damage, there will be a smaller set of numbers by its feet. If you get that, then you've not positioned the flyer correctly. I'll show you what it looks like if you position your flyer too short of a foundation tip. The distance a golem stops behind the flyer is always the same. So because the flyer is not forward enough, a golem's head doesn't snugly fit in a blast shield, and its neck and shoulders are exposed to splash damage. So because the fly is not forward enough, the golem's not forward enough, it's not fully in the blast shield, and the blast shield's not covering its neck or shoulders enough. So when I fire a cannonball, you'll see a smaller set of numbers by its feet. That indicates a golem's getting hit by splash damage, so it's taming the fish as he won't be 100%. So if that happens, reposition the flyer forward more. I'll now show you what happens if you position your flyer too far forward past the blast shield. 
Remember the golem will always stop a certain distance behind the flyer, but if he flies too far away from that distance, and the blast shield stopping the golem walking forward towards the flyer, the rock elemental will try and walk around the blast shield. So it'll keep moving and its head won't be pointed forward towards a cannon. Its head will be hard to hit, and because it's not in the blast shield correctly, if you did shoot it in the head you'll just give it splash damage. If this happens, call your flyer down, get on it and reposition the golem. I've grabbed its aggro, it's in centered and jump off directly over foundation point. There we go, perfect positioning. Man the cannon, shoot the cannonballs at it. And you see there's only one set of numbers so your golem's not getting splash damaged. Now if you think that's a bit tricky, I've done an easier version with training wheels for you, which I'll show you later. Anyway, back to when I first started shooting it. Just hit it with four cannonballs. Top is going up nicely. And because the golem will never move or bend down, you don't even have to look at it or time your shots, which leaves you free to shoot it as fast as possible. Not a single shot will miss, and you're guaranteed 100% taming efficiency. The exact goal I wanted to achieve. Which, as far as I know, no other technique can do. A few more should do it. There we go, knocked it out, and I'm not even looking at it. One KO'd Rock Elemental. Show you how much health it's got left. Let's drag a kibble in. Whistle for the pterodon not to follow you. Move away and it usually flies down. It's been a bit awkward that time. There we go. Finally join me. Right, just gotta wait for it to get hungry. To have its first bite. This food's going down. And there we go, 100% taming effectiveness, with maximum levels of plus 74. That's got to be the quickest and easiest tame ever. The only part you need skill for is to get the pterodon and therefore the golem in the right position. But if you think you're not able to do that, I'm going to show you the training wheels version. If you've already built your blast shield and you're having problems getting it in, what you'll need is one wooden double doorway, eight thatch walls, and two foundations. Drag goes to your hotbar. This is going to be a temporary structure. I'm going to show you how to do the permanent one after. Put one foundation behind a triangle foundation, and then delete it. Then put down a square foundation. Remove the one behind. The structure remains standing. Next, select the thatch walls and build seven high. Might need to get on a flyer to do the top part. Then put in your wooden double doorways. Then one more thatch wall on top. And that's a temporary training wheels version. What we have to do then is fly into the double doors and that will keep your pterodon at the exact perfect distance between it and the rock golem. Let me demonstrate. Everything's set up. Go and get the golem. Wakey wakey. Kite it down to your blast shield. Don't get too far ahead of it, or otherwise it will turn back into a rock. Right, that should be fair enough. Fly into the double doors, locks the pterodon there. Jump off. Stay behind the pterodon. The golem will just walk into the shield. Stay there looking at the pterodon. <laughs> then go up to the thatch wall and destroy it. stones. Get rid of them. There we go. Might try and throw a rock at you. Move sideways. 
Then it will focus back on the pterodon. Go to the cannon. Load the balls and start shooting at its face. As you see, there's only one damage number come up, so there's no splash damage. You're set for another 100% effectiveness on your taming. If you wanted something a little more permanent to help you out, when you switch to a square foundation, instead of using thatch and wood, have seven metal double doorways and two metal walls. Put six double doorways down at the edge of a foundation. Got your flyer for the high ones. Then for the seventh, you want to put a wall down. Then for the eighth, another double door. Then on the very top, put another wall. And that'll catch your pterodon. This method works almost exactly the same as a temporary structure. Just go and get the golem. In fact, I'll show you a different method of walking it in. Come on, that should be a distance. Right, I'm going to get my pterodon into position, jump off. I'll probably lose aggro on the golem, which I did. So the bird's in position. Walk up to the golem, he'll chuck a rock at you. Just stay behind the railing. He'll walk towards you and get behind the cannon. And just walk up, aggro on the pterodon. <laughs> I just stay there, gawping at it again. Position your cannon to make sure it shoots right between the double doorways. I think that's the best I'm going to get. Maybe put a cannon down after you've built a pterodon holder. Load up your balls, then shoot your load in its face. And as you can see, no splash damage. So, another perfect 100% effectiveness every time. You only can do that walking method if a golem's close to your blast shield because the pterodon is still on follow you so if you leave it in position then move too far away to get the golem the flyer will start following you again and mess up its positioning this is just one blast shield idea it works perfectly but i'm sure there's many other ideas out there you'll be able to come up with so you can have a play about and come up with your own if you want don't forget if you haven't watched my previous video the best way to tame a rock elemental with no traps Watch that video now please or you'll have no understanding of mechanics, how to set everything up or get this method to work. Don't forget to subscribe. If this video is helpful for you, which I'm sure it was, please like, subscribe, click the bell notifications and all and share it with your friends. There's links to other videos at the end. Comment on what you would like to see. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you again. Goodbye.